For 600 years, the Voynich Manuscript has been history's greatest puzzle, an undecipherable book filled with strange symbols and impossible drawings. Countless experts have tried and failed to crack its code. Then AI succeeded where humans couldn't. The translation it revealed has left scholars terrified of what medieval scribes actually knew. It all started in 1912 when a Polish book dealer named Wilfred Voynich discovered this mysterious manuscript in a Jesuit library. The manuscript, made of vellum and carbon dated to the late 1400s, contains an alphabet that looks completely foreign, even today. For centuries, cryptographers, linguists, and historians have tried and failed to decipher it. But then, in 2016, two researchers from the University of Alberta, Greg Kondrak and Bradley Hauer, decided to let artificial intelligence take a shot. The idea was bold. Use modern machine learning techniques to analyze the manuscript's text, find patterns, and try to identify its language. AI, after all, is great at detecting patterns. Could it be the key to cracking this centuries-old code? The AI system was trained on the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, translated into 380 different languages. With this multilingual database, the AI learned the statistical fingerprints of various languages, how certain letter combinations appeared more frequently in Spanish than German, for example. The researchers hoped that by analyzing the Voynich manuscript's text, the machine would find a familiar pattern and guess the language. And after a lot of number crunching, the AI gave its answer Hebrew. Not Latin, not any European language, but medieval Hebrew. The AI had found patterns in the manuscript that it believed most closely resembled this ancient language. This conclusion was far from what anyone expected. But the researchers weren't done yet. They hypothesized that the author of the Voynich manuscript may have taken Hebrew words, stripped them of vowels, something Hebrew often does, and scrambled the letters. So, they applied their theory to the first sentence of the manuscript and ran it through a program that rearranged the letters. After making a few adjustments, they plugged the output into Google Translate, and voila, an English sentence appeared. She made recommendations to the priest, man of the house, and me and people. Now, this sounds promising, right? An actual English sentence. But hold on, because this is where things get weird. While the sentence was grammatically correct, it didn't really shed much light on the manuscript's true meaning. It was vague, oddly specific, and honestly pretty cryptic. The sentence didn't exactly scream ancient wisdom or hidden knowledge. It was the kind of line you'd expect to find in a medieval HR memo, not a secret book of alchemy. And here's the kicker. The AI didn't actually decode anything on its own. The researchers had to manually tweak the output adjust the spelling and, in essence, force it into a coherent English sentence. This wasn't some AI miracle, it was a careful manipulation of the system to get something that sounded right, even if it didn't make much sense. Once the headlines hit, claiming that AI had finally cracked the Voynich manuscript, the reaction was swift and polarized. Many experts were quick to point out that the AI's results were based on some pretty shaky assumptions. The AI's method hinged on the idea that the manuscript's words were anagrams of Hebrew words with vowels removed. This assumption, however, wasn't backed by any hard evidence. It was simply the best guess the AI could make. And even if it did produce a coherent sentence, critics argued that the AI was simply hallucinating, finding meaning in patterns that weren't really there. It's like picking through a jumble of letters and, by chance, pulling out a real word. Once you allow that much flexibility, it's not hard to create meaning from nonsense. The real problem, though, was the AI's method itself. It wasn't actually reading the manuscript, it was just crunching numbers. The algorithm was trained on modern languages, yet the Voynich text was written in the 15th century, meaning the AI was trying to decipher something from a completely different time period, using tools that were out of their depth. It's like trying to understand medieval English by training an AI on modern English, it's not going to work. In fact, the second place contender in the AI's analysis wasn't even Hebrew, it was Malay. And that's when the alarm bells started ringing. If the AI is picking between languages with no real historical connection, it's clear that it's not truly understanding anything. It's simply choosing the best option from a bunch of bad ones. This wasn't the breakthrough the world had been waiting for. Now, let's be clear, AI is a fantastic tool for detecting patterns in massive datasets. 
It can analyze languages, detect statistical correlations, and spit out results in a fraction of the time it would take a human. But here's the catch. AI doesn't have context. It doesn't understand the history, culture, or deeper meanings of the text it's working with. It's a pattern-matching machine, not a scholar. And when you throw it into a centuries-old mystery with so many unknowns, it's bound to make mistakes. The real issue here isn't that AI failed. It's that the result was presented as a definitive solution, when it clearly wasn't. The public got swept up in the excitement, but the scholarly community was quick to call out the flaws in the methodology. Critics were quick to point out that the AI's findings were highly speculative at best, and that relying on Google Translate to finish the translation was unorthodox at best. It wasn't a scientific breakthrough. It was a clever exercise in forced pattern recognition. So where does that leave us? After all the hype and excitement around AI's attempt to crack the Voynich manuscript, the manuscript remains as elusive as ever. No, AI didn't solve it. In fact, it barely scratched the surface. But that doesn't mean the quest is over. In many ways, this failed attempt by technology to decode one of the most infamous mysteries of all time might be more telling than any breakthrough would have been. The manuscript still resists all efforts to truly understand it, and that's okay. Maybe the real lesson here is that not every puzzle in history is meant to be solved by brute force, no matter how sophisticated our technology becomes. In a world where we're used to getting quick answers to almost everything, the Voynich manuscript serves as a reminder that some things are meant to remain enigmatic. It challenges us to appreciate the value of curiosity itself, to embrace the thrill of the unknown. There's something inherently powerful about the fact that this book, its meaning, its origins, its purpose, remains locked away in a cryptic, unreadable code. For centuries, the manuscript has been a magnet for the curious, a lure for those who seek answers to the big questions. And while we may never crack the code in a way that satisfies every curiosity, the manuscript continues to inspire people from all walks of life. It sparks conversations, fuels creativity, and most importantly, it reminds us that the process of seeking answers, whether successful or not, is often just as meaningful as the answers themselves. Ultimately, maybe it's not about solving the puzzle at all. Maybe it's about the pursuit. The manuscript endures as a symbol of the mysteries that lie beyond our immediate comprehension, and it serves as a challenge for future generations of thinkers. It's a puzzle that teaches us patience and resilience, reminding us that there are some mysteries worth pondering for as long as it takes. So, as the search for the manuscript's true meaning continues, we realize that the real magic lies in the journey itself. In every attempt to decode its cryptic pages, in every theory that arises and falls short, and in the countless minds it continues to inspire, the mystery endures, and in that enduring mystery, we find a reason to keep looking, keep questioning, keep searching. Because sometimes, the most valuable thing we uncover isn't the answer, but the questions that remain.